MovieWeb.com. How do you decide who we're going to play these different stages of Dylan? I mean, you've got a powerhouse cast here, all these big time actors. Yeah. Who did you decide was going to go fit in each role? I, I really, it sounds, you know, like a cop out answer, but I really picked the best people I could think of for each category. I really did. I mean, I, I did, and but that said, I, I for, for the Richard Gere section, for instance, I, I did want an actor who was a movie star. I wanted somebody who had a kind of almost little history of American film embedded in them as, as, as they played the part, uh, or in the lines in their faces, like someone who, whose face had changed over the years. Because this was about a famous person who was in exile from his past and his and his fame and his notoriety in the final story of the film, and if you've ended up getting little memories of Richard in in Days of Heaven or something, riding the horse down the hill, like that would be great for me. You know what I mean? So in some cases, it, it was also looking at these actors' specific histories in movies. Dylan's time, the '60s and the chaos of that time is not too far fucked up from what's happening now in this time, but we're a little bit more corporate about it, right? Yeah. Um, do you think that's primarily the reason why Dylan stays so relevant today, or is it more of just a great folk singer and good music? You mean because we keep screwing up again, <laughs> over and over again, <laughs> and, he, and his words sound fresh? And when you hear Masters of War, you're like, dude, you're onto something. Um, no, I, 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 think it's, I think it's due to you know, for all the right reasons, it's due to an amazingly original popular artist who has bridged the gap between, you know, high art and popular art and exploded what a popular song could be, you know, and continues to do impressive work to this day. So I really think it's due to him. I don't think it's necessarily due to the times. I, I wish we remembered the 60s more and weren't repeating the same mistakes. Now, has he seen this film? What's his reaction to this whole process? And uh, I don't know if this is kind of like a hero worship of him, but it's kind of like you know him on screen being interpreted. Yeah. How did he feel about that? Have you discussed it? Well, I have never talked to Dylan. I've never met Dylan. It's all been done with his permission. We began, and wouldn't have, I wouldn't have proceeded if we couldn't get the rights to the music. So that was the very, very first step, and we got the rights to the music, which was historic because he's never given rights for a film like this about his life. Um, but from that point on, he was pretty much out of our way. And, and Jeff Rosen, his manager, oversaw the production and was in touch with us all the way throughout and was wonderfully generous with us, but really did not impose limits or restrictions or, or watchdog what we were doing or in that way. And now Dylan has a DVD with him on his tour in his suitcase and that's the last I heard. I don't know if he's had a chance to watch it yet. So of course I'm dying that's amazing. to hear. That's yeah. amazing. It I mean, really is. What do you think his reaction would be? If I mean you've obviously been studying him and writing about him and you're into his music. Yeah. How do you think Dylan that you know would react to this film? I I just hope he gets the the playfulness in it. You know, I think the one thing he gets the most sick of is being over worshipped and being put on pedestals and being kind of tied down to his greatest moments. I think that's why he had to change so many times and shift out of skin so many times. And I think uh, I just hope he sees that I'm also embracing that that constant movement that he's had from place to place and person to person, and that there's a great deal of humor in the film and uh, and playfulness. 